When it comes to adding depth, creativity, and a professional touch to your designs, object effects in Adobe InDesign are essential. These effects allow you to manipulate how objects like text, images, and shapes interact with your layout, giving you control over everything from subtle highlights to dramatic shadows and glows. Object effects aren't just about aesthetics. They help guide the viewer's eye, create visual hierarchy, and add dimension to flat elements. These tools are crucial for building professional level designs that feel polished and dynamic. In this video, we'll explore how object effects work, the flexibility they offer, and why mastering them will take your layout skills to the next level. So here I am with the document open in InDesign, and this is a quick overview of all the object effects you could work with in InDesign. To get hands-on with object effects, let's jump into this worksheet I have prepared earlier. This document can be found in the downloadable folder that comes with this course. This download folder comes with multiple projects and a ton of assets and resources we will be using in this course. You can find the link to acquire the folder from the description. With the download folder open, click into folder 2, Practice Files, and open the Practice Worksheets in Design file. If you scroll down to page 2, we can see a variety of worksheets. For this video, we are going to look at the Object Effects Worksheet, so with the Selection tool, I'll select the Object Effects thumbnail. Now I'll either come over to the Links panel and click Edit Original, or I'll hold Alt on the keyboard and double click on the Worksheet thumbnail, and the worksheet will open in its own tab. In this worksheet, you can see what we're going to cover. And on the second spread below, you can see I have outlined a variety of objects with various styles applied to get a quick overview. So when working with effects in InDesign, it all revolves around the effects panel. Applying effects to objects is a very common thing to do. So personally, I like to keep my effects panel accessible at all times. I keep mine on my panel strip here to the left of my visual panels. If you cannot see your effects panel, come up to window and down to effects. As we apply them to our objects, it's from this panel that we can view the effects and manage the effects. So a common effect that is used in InDesign is transparency. This is useful for layering elements, creating subtle overlays, or blending images with the background. To manage the opacity of an object, this is done in the effects panel. So if I come and click on the first object here, in the effects panel, we can see that this is currently set to 100% in the top right. If I click on the object next to this, we can currently see through it, and this has a transparency of 50%. If I click on the third shape, again, this has a transparency of 50%. If you want to toggle the transparency of an object, you can do this up in the effects panel. Next, we have blending modes, which work just like they do in Photoshop. In InDesign, blending modes allow you to control how color and layers interact with each other by blending them together in different ways. Blending modes offer creative flexibility helping you to achieve complex visual results without needing to create new graphics. If we look at these three examples here, I have the same image repeated three times. For the second example, I have a black and white effect applied. This is created by using a color object on top with a blending mode. If I select the object on top, in the effects panel, we can see that this has a blending mode of color applied. If I turn this back to normal, we can see that this is a simple frame filled with gray. By applying the color blending mode, I can make this image appear black and white. Now, if you're clever with these blending modes, you can build them up and use them to get very particular effects. In this third example, I have two objects on top of my image. And if I just drag these off, you can see that we have the original image below. To the first object, I have a magenta color applied, again with a blending mode of color. This turns the background image to this particular effect. Then using another layer on top of this, Still magenta, but this time with a hard light blending applied, we can get a very distinct effect. Using blending modes like this can be very flexible. Once you've got them set up, you can simply change the colors in the frames to change your effects on the fly. So next we have all the general object effects that one can apply in InDesign. Object effects can add depth, dimension, and emphasis, making elements stand out or blend seamlessly into the overall composition. Whether you're designing for print or digital, Mastering object effects gives you creative control to elevate your layouts and add sophisticated details. However, when applying effects, it's important to use them carefully. Too much can overwhelm the design, while subtle use can add the perfect finishing touch. Down here, you can see I have a range of them at a quick glance. To apply effects to your objects, you can do this in one of two ways. With an object selected, you could either right-click, come down to effects and click on an effect here, 
or you can come up to the effect panel and click on the effects drop down icon at the bottom of the panel and choose from one of the many effects on offer. This can also be good to reference what effect may be currently applied to an object. If you have an effect applied to an object like I do in this instance, you will see a tick next to the effect. By clicking on one of these, you will open the effects menu. Now the effects menu is where you can apply an effect and manage your effect properties. Right now, I currently have a drop shadow effect applied and over on the right, we have all the values determining this effect. When you use the effect menu, be sure to click on the preview checkbox in the bottom. This will allow you to see any edits that you make to your effects in real time. In InDesign, you can apply multiple effects to a single object. Simply click on the side to activate more effects and toggle the values over on the right. Now, another quick thing to keep in mind when working with effects in InDesign is scaling. If we come and open the preferences menu in InDesign and come to general, around halfway, you will see the option when scaling. If you want your effects to scale when you scale your object, you will need this checked. And if you don't, simply uncheck this box. By default, I believe this is automatically checked to scale. But if you find your effects are not scaling with your objects, then check this option in the preferences. So another really useful effect to keep in mind when using InDesign is feathering. This allows you to soften the edges of an object, creating a gradual fade between the object and its background. This is great for creating subtle transitions and blending objects into the layout without harsh edges. Feathering can add a polished professional look to your designs by creating smooth, seamless edges that help integrate elements more naturally into the overall composition. Now, when using feathering in InDesign, it will fall into three main approaches, basic feather, directional feather, and gradient feather. Basic feather allows you to just add a simple feather around the outside of your object. If I just click on this object here and come into the effects panel, you can see that applied to this object is a basic feather. And on the right, you can see the values that we can customize around the outside. The directional feather is similar to the basic feather. However, unlike the basic feather that just applies a consistent feather around the outside of an object, the directional feather allows you to customize where the feather comes from. In the effects menu, you can customize it from the top, the bottom or left or right, or a combination of each. You can also click to tweak the noise, the choke, the shape and the angle. Now the gradient feather offers additional flexibility. Here you can use the gradient feather tool in the tools menu, where you can click and drag over an object and toggle the values far more organically. In the effects menu, you can customize the gradient stops and the type of gradient. Looking at the example below, Feathering is commonly used when trying to create contrast between a background image and visual elements on top, such as icons and text. If you click on top, you can see there are object frames above with feather effects applied. In InDesign, it's common to use light or dark layers on top of an image in this way and feather them across to reveal parts of the image to allow space to place text. Now, when working with effects in InDesign, there are a couple of workflow tips you will want to keep in mind. Now, if you're working on documents for digital, and you start working with transparency and blending modes, you may notice the color change. For example, if I come up to edit, scroll down to transparency blend space and click on CMYK, you will see that everything will change quite drastically. When working in InDesign, I like to keep my transparency blend space set to RGB. So when I'm working on my documents, I can see the colors accurately. Another quick tip to keep in mind, if you have effects applied to an object and you want to quickly remove them, with your object selected, by coming up to the effects panel, you can click this little square icon at the bottom and this will now remove any effects applied. Another cool feature to save you time is the ability to clone an effect from one object to another. If I select all the general effects here, come down to the next spread and paste them, come back up and grab some of the feather effects and again paste them below. With our new shape selected, if we come over to the tools menu, we can click the eyedropper tool. With this selected, if we come over and start to click on the other objects, we can apply the same effect to another object. By pressing I on the keyboard, we can activate the eyedropper tool and click and continue to click on other objects to clone the effect. A useful trick to keep in mind to save you some time. Another cool feature to keep in mind is applying effects to groups. Up to this point, we have been looking at effects applied to individual objects. However, if you have a number of objects grouped together, it's then easy to apply an effect like a directional blur or even add a blending mode. If we look at these objects placed on the last page, if we click on one of these, we can see that currently it's set to a group. If you double click on the group, you can click into and select the individual object making up the group. Again, with the group selected, if we press I to activate the eyedropper tool, we can click to select and apply effects to the entire group. 
Also, we can grab the gradient feather tool and click and drag to add and change the direction or come to the bottom of the effects panel and click to remove all effects. Notice here on this image, we also have multiple frames placed on top with blending modes applied to achieve a range of color effects below. Now, if we look at the bottom of the effects panel, we can see these two checkboxes, one for isolate blending and one for knockout group. So what do these do? Well, if we come to the bottom spread here, we can see some examples. Here we have images with the objects placed on top with different effects applied. So the first effect used is the isolate blending. So looking at the next page, at the top we have the same object here, a blue circle stroke and a red solid filled star. Let's say we take them and place them over the image below. Now in this instance, I want to apply a blending mode to the red star object to blend with the blue object below, but not the image below, like we see on the left here. Now using isolate blending only works on grouped objects. So first I'll need to select both the circle and the star, right click and group them. Then if I double click into the group, select the red object, come up to blending mode and hit multiply, we can see that the red object is not only applying the blending mode to the blue object in the group, but also to the image in the background. With the group selected, if I press the isolate blending button, it will now only apply the blending mode within the group and not affect anything behind it. Nice. Now, if we look at the knockout example, we can see something different happening. This time, if I click and drag the object group down while holding Alt to duplicate, I'll click to turn off the isolate blending and we will see the red star apply the blending mode to the blue circle and the image in the background. If we come and hit knockout group, upon click, we will now see the blending still applies to the background image, but now clips out the blue circle, creating a different blending effect on the object group. So another cool feature to keep in mind when using InDesign. So those are all the key principles you need to know when working with effects in InDesign. If you're new to InDesign, I'd recommend having a play around with this worksheet and explore the many effects on offer to get comfortable using them in InDesign. So now we are all clued up on how to use effects, we can move on to the next subject. So I'll see you in the next video.